Welcome to Management Decision Tools. In this session, we will explore the sensitivity analysis as applied to linear programming models. Our focus is to apply the sense of sensitivity analysis to LP models. So when we have an LP models, we set this up um, and we ask question about whether a small disturbance in the input will lead to any disturbance at all in the output. And if there is any disturbance at all in the output, how big a disturbance is that? How big an outcome is that? Right. So primarily we'll be talking about the range of optimality, the range of feasibility, and how to interpret uh, reduced cost shadow price from the outcomes of sensitivity report as generated by Excel. We'll talk about that in a while. And also for the case when multiple input disturbances are made at the same time, simultaneously, what will be the output, what will be the result of disturbing the LP model system in that fashion. Okay. So in what follows, we'll apply the sense of sensitivity analysis to LP model as a system. Now what is sensitivity analysis? Essentially, it, uh, as a general uh, topic, it discusses uh, and examines the change in the output whenever a system has its inputs being disturbed a little bit. So small change in the input, will it result in large change, small change, or no change in the output? That's the question we are asking for from the perspective of sensitivity analysis. So what is input and what is output uh, from the perspective of LP model? So in the previous video session, we have seen such an example of um, an LP situation where we don't know how many X1, X2 products, product 1, product 2 to make. So we define two decision variables, X1 and X2, subject to uh, you know, limitations of uh, total amount of iron available and minimum number of uh, X1 products to make and maximum number of X2 products to make. So we list down all the constraints. Uh, X1, each unit fetches $100, X2, each unit fetches $200, and we want to maximize our total profit. Right? So a very simple, basic example. So we have this model. So our question today is, what are the inputs? It doesn't seem quite obvious here, but hey, look, all the numbers here that we feed into the LP model, they are the inputs because they connect this LP model to the operating environment. It is in this factory, in this country, that uh, product one, product two, they sell for $100 profit and $200 profit respectively. Right? So we link from the environment to this model via the coefficients. Um, we also have the coefficients on the constraints and the right-hand side. Conveniently, we call them the right-hand side because they always the constant is always moved to the right-hand side. So the right-hand side also tells us about the environment because we only have 200 pounds of steel available every week for example a minimum number of units we must make says the management or the marketing department or the sales department for x uh, for product one is 60 units right so all these numbers connect the model to the environment and these numbers serve as the input and what about the output well when we solve this model using Excel solver, we get a uh, solution. So solution definitely is output. So the coordinate pair, uh, x1 equals to 60 and x2 equal to 626, they are the out outcomes and therefore the output of this system. And of course, in addition, the indirect outputs, uh, the outputs that we get after making use of uh, the, the, the primary information like 60 and 626 will include also the objective function value. In other words, if we implement this solution, we will get $131,333 uh, every week as profit and no more. So these are the outputs, but let me also point out to you some other outputs from this model that are not so clear at first or not so visible at first. And they are the left-hand side. They are the left-hand side uh, and left-hand sides are not visible in the original model because they don't help to um, describe the environment. It's a, it's a byproduct of solving the system. So the left-hand side tells us 
the amount of material actually consumed or the uh, performance uh, level actually reached right so for example if we cannot use more than 2000 pounds of steel the output from the system tells us that we actually used up all 2000 pounds of steel and that's information too because we didn't know that the outcome could have been lesser than 2000 we could have used 1900 pounds right but we actually use up all likewise in the second case we actually barely exceeded barely touched the required number of units to produce for product one 16. and we couldn't have known that upfront because it could have been 90 it could have been 1000 right but we actually just uh, managed to to touch 60 in satisfaction of the performance requirement so that is an output too right the lhs the left hand side and likewise for the third constraint we cannot produce more than 720 units of x2 product 2 and what happens was actually we only produce 626.7 units right 627 units is that a problem or not will be the interpretation part but first thing first 626.6667 that's the output given from the system right? okay so these are the various outputs given by the system so the question is this um, when we disturb the inputs how much or will the output change so for lp models we can ask specifically two kinds of questions okay if we disturb one of the coefficients if we disturb one of the coefficients for example it is at our liberty to increase the price of product one but not product two from 100 we can make 110 dollars of profit what will be the impact on the optimal solution right so that's the first kind of question we ask when we disturb one of the coefficients in the objective function will the optimal solution change so that's a very important category of uh, questions of sensitivity report questions that we can answer if one of the objective function coefficients is changed Okay, so that's the first kind of first category of questions we can ask or rather we can use the excel sensitivity report to solve and the second kind of question is relating to the right hand side of the constraints so the first category is about the objective function second category is about the constraints if one of the right hand side is changed how much will the optimal value change okay so these two categories of questions basically summarize uh, the kind of questions we can use sensitivity report to answer okay so let's look at the first one if one of the objective function coefficient is changed so what does that mean let's, let's look at our example if 100 is increased to 110 okay will the optimal solution change so right now optimal solution is 60 comma 626 when we change from 100 to 110 question will x1 x2 still have the same value as optimal solution now why is that uh, an important question to ask so if all we are interested in is change or no change uh, as a homework assignment then that's easy you know yes change no no change um, not very exciting not very important at all but why is this important now uh, remember let's let's bring our minds into the factory producing product one and product two right so right now the the imagine that the factory has these two 
you know, production lines, one producing product one, one producing product two. To produce 60 units every week for product one, we probably will uh, feed the, the production line at a slower rate, use less workers, uh, stand by less inventory, and so on. Product two, on the other hand, will be very busy pipeline, or we might even have uh, two lines uh, to be able to produce 626 units per week. We will have easily 10 times more workers, uh, more machines, more raw materials, and so on. Yeah, imagine the the you know the busy state of affair in the factory. Now, suppose we wonder or we have this marketing plan, sales plan, to bring in more profit. All the market analysis shows that we can do that, so we increase hundred to hundred and ten. But if this, if solving the new solution, this disturbed solution with hundred and ten, but the rest of the numbers are the same results in having x1 equals to 300 x2 equals to 400 that means the optimal solution has changed now that is not necessarily a good thing because as you can imagine when we increase the coefficient all right we have more profits per sale we produce more x1 that's good so we have a lot of more money right but wait wait because optimal solution has changed what must we do to, to, to produce that quantity? We now must ramp up five times more production for X1, from 60 to 300. What that means, we need more machines, more raw materials, more workers, and maybe workers with the right skill set and expertise, uh, operating hours, and so on and so forth, right? For X2, we have to drastically scale down and leaving a lot of machines idle, a lot of workers uh, may be retrenched because their skill sets cannot be redeployed, uh, and so on and so forth. Now imagine the big change happening on the ground. And when that happens, you have a lot of costs, right? So to, to, to lay off workers, you need to have costs. To hire more workers rapidly, you also need to spend money. Now, who's going to pay for that, right? And will your proposed increase of profit from 100 to 110 be able to cover that? Now, those are big questions. And so they are all invisible costs draining the lucrativeness of this proposal to increase from 100 to 110. See that? So that's the damage that, that is hidden in what might seem like a simple answer. Oh, uh, optimal solution has changed. Yeah. So it's not that simple. I want you to appreciate the gravity of this uh, this this observation that optimal solution has changed. It's a big deal. It's some. It's it's in many cases uh, something we want to react very uh, uh, strongly to. You see, because um, this is factory production iron. That's heavy work. But what happens if it's uh, a little bit soft? Example like investments, right? You just uh, X one will be the amount of money you buy for stock one and next to amount of money you buy for stock too. So if there's a change, well, you just sell off some money from uh, for, for stock two and then buy more shares for stock one, right? Not that simple because that involves cost as well. Maybe the timing for selling X2 is not right, so you sell at a loss. Yeah, so, so what gain ha have you got from, from doing that? So if optimal solution changes, it's often uh, associated with cost of change, cost to effect the change, and that is often not good news. And so we have to uh, really sit up and say, oh no, if this tweak results in the big change, because optimal solution changing for us, for me, for this business situation is big deal, I think we better think otherwise, right? Something like that. Or we might not want to increase from 100 to 110, but 100 to 102 first. So that is another question we need to ask. Will the output change? Will the optimal solution change if we increase from 100 to 102? Oh, it doesn't change. How about 103? Oh, it doesn't. How about 104? So you start to test a little bit, right? And we like a more productive, efficient way to do that rather than soft, 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 10 times, 20 times. 